that I look awesome or ridiculous. <laughs> you look awesome. <laughs> it's been a while since we talked about cameras, so I figured, should we dive? Oh wait, hold on. Should we? Should we dive in? <laughs> 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 Worst <laughs> intro ever. <laughs> so I've been wanting to do this for a while. Not just like my camera update. Well, I mean, I needed to do that for a while, but like a mid midweek sort of, I don't know, information, questions and answers, uh, products, could be, you know, cooking related, could be cocktails, could be camera gear, could be solar. Anyway, it's like a midweek thing and we've been talking about it for years, <laughs> right? Uh, so this is kind of the start. This is officially the start of our midweek, we don't have a name for it yet, technology thing. Gear Up Wednesday. Yeah, Gear Up Wednesday. Tech Tuesday. Tech Thursday. Something like that. Things on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Things on Thursday, I like that. Um, not always on Thursday though. Uh, that's beside the point. Let's dive right in. First thing I want to get talking about, did I cover everything? Sure. Okay. First thing I want to talk about is tripods. Whoa. So I don't have to handle. Yeah. Oh, jeez. This one, I used to carry this like thousand, well, like $1,200 carbon graphite, carbon fiber tripod <laughs> that was super expensive, very lightweight, but it was a pain in the butt because it was big. You know, this one's just as lightweight. This one's a couple hundred bucks. It folds up to nothing and I use it for time lapse. It's a really solid, little, cheapy, packable tripod. It's still good quality. Yeah, yeah, it's good quality. It has like this head that's almost like a video fluid head. Um, and the, my favorite part about this tripod is it has this. So you can be on the most unlevel surface and it almost works like a ball head because then you can square up the camera. I don't know, it works great for action camera, beach stuff all around. This is about a year and a half old and it has survived the sea and the sand very well. Right, Nikki? Yeah. All right, let's set it up for you. My other go-to tripod is this flexy, bendy little guy. Oh, wait. What? <laughs> we forgot to say to all of our fellow Americans, Happy Thanksgiving. Anybody that's having a piece of pecan pie, please have a piece for me. That's one thing I'm missing today. Yeah, we definitely can't get that here. Okay, back to the video. <laughs> Oh, and apparently one of the reasons I wanted to start with this video is Cyber Monday, Black Friday, they're right around the corner and apparently they're worldwide because they're doing it here in Panama. Must be worldwide. So get a good deal, start shopping, buy, buy, buy. <laughs> or don't, only buy what you need. Exactly, only buy what you need. So back to the tripod. This is my favorite little flexi bendy portable tripod that I just throw in a backpack. Works for city, for hiking. It bends around anything, trees, poles, and it has this ball head that can adjust to any angle to square up the camera. It's a good little tool to have. All right, tripods. Well, now we're stable here on this tripod. Let's make me look prettier, which is not that easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki's laughing back there. I bought this about a year ago, maybe six months ago, and it's like this super high powered light. I'll turn it on for you and blind you. Boom, yep probably change the exposure on the camera, but it works really well. It has this flip up thing for softening. It has magnifying. It has these little, I forgot what they're called, but it helps direct the light. And it uses this big lithium battery. So this works great for night, for when we're set up like this, like I'm gonna do right now. Okay, Nikki, turn that light up. Ah, uh, it's like, just adds a little bit of extra glow to my face, softens it, softens the light. It's fully color color calibrated so you can change it to warm and cool it has a min max balance nikki's gonna play with it it is sort of heavy and it is pretty expensive but we thought for situations like this where we talk to the camera and um, it's like not great lighting it really helps so that's that and i think from here on out now that we're set up here i'm gonna start with the smallest most affordable camera and work my way up to the one that i'm filming on right now that'll be the last one How's that sound? Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. So I guess everybody has a phone. So let's start here. This case is custom made for these lenses. These lenses just pop off and pop on just like that. This is a telephoto lens. This is an ultra wide lens. So either way like that, I have wide lens. 
This is the iPhone 7 Plus. I think they have the 8 out now. I have no doubt that the new one's even better. Nikki's going to record me with this. So what these lenses do for us, oh by the way they're called Ulu Clip or Olo Clip, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but it gives me more creativity. So if I want to shoot wide, like I'm doing right now, I mean the phone's great, the audio sounds decent, the lens just gives, you know, a different perspective. So okay. Can you flip it around? Yes, so this is the... Ultra, super wide. Super wide. It's going to get shaky. Yep. And yeah. now, telephoto. What? <laughs> Can you see my nose hairs? <laughs> so that's it. That is the iPhone with the Ulu clip. And the way we use this is if we're in town and we have, oh, something neat. We carry it on this little clip. This is like a little tripod thing for the iPhone. So it pops out so you can set it down and like hold a trash can or whatever. I can't actually see that. There we go. Yeah. Okay, here's just a regular. Okay, there's no lens. But uh, we use this for when we walk around town. If we don't think anything's gonna happen, it's nice to have a camera in our pocket that has options. That's how we use the iPhone. That's how we use the Ulu clip. Yeah. And for photos, lots of photos, Instagram and, and whatnot. Yeah. Quality isn't as good, obviously, yeah. but it's pretty. It's pretty darn good. It's pretty darn good. Yeah. So we switch back. Yep. On the iPhone, since it's all about being easy to use, we also have this little selfie stick thing with a button so we can release the shutter. It has a tripod built in. The other fun thing we use is this guy. Uh, I'll slap it on there real quick. It gives it a feel like a camera and there's an app built in so if you want to adjust exposure or adjust um, f-stop or shutter speed like I don't know there's a bunch of different settings so it makes it feel more like a camera. It is a pretty interesting little device um, and like I said we've used it a few times. It's not like our every time go-to but it's our hey let's go play with this thing. All right, that's the iPhone. Yeah, and accessories. And accessories. Let's go into action cameras. Why not? That is really the next progression, I believe. So let's talk GoPro. This is the GoPro something or other. Five. Yep, and of course they have a brand new one out that I don't have because getting new cameras and upgrading all the time is kind of impossible on a boat. It's splash proof. Actually, it's waterproof. waterproof, down to a certain number of feet. We've used it several times, just diving without the case. I won't go into the underwater stuff. But we mainly use it on this gimbal. This gimbal is splash proof or water resistant, I think they say. Not waterproof, so you can't take this gimbal underwater. But the smoothness of the footage is so fantastic that I decided to order this same gimbal for our bigger camera. Um, they now have one for the big camera that we're shooting on now and the little camera like this. Anyway, Nikki's gonna switch on the GoPro now. It has a selfie mode. <laughs> That's the gimbal. I love the fluidity of it and the selfie mode <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> we don't ever actually use the selfie yeah, mode. No, but it is super fluid. It's nice on the boat when we're just bam, bam, crashing on the dinghy. We don't have to worry about it getting wet because it is waterproof and water resistant, um, the gimbal and the GoPro. So we love that part about it. The downside of the gimbal is it destroys the audio, which you're hearing right now, no doubt. Um, that said, the audio on the GoPro is not that great as is, and we're not a huge fan of the color of the GoPro. Uh, Nikki feels like it's a lot of post work to try and get it to match all of our other cameras. Yeah, especially underwater. Yeah. I think it's a good camera to have. This setup is awesome. If they had this gimbal in the water, resistant version for our Sony Action Cam, I would no doubt buy that because I would like it better. Yep. Next up, Sony Action Cam. I've talked about this camera before. I really like it. The downside is, is it is only splash proof. So it's not waterproof like the GoPro connects to this wristband screen. So when you have this set up somewhere else on the boat, I can hit record, I can see what's going on. This is a really nice feature to have. Whether you have a GoPro or a Sony Action Cam, some sort of additional screen is nice. In order to make this thing waterproof, you have to put it in the case and now it destroys the audio. So this is the Action Cam with no case and you see how it sounds. It looks, we think, pretty good, and the optical stabilizer that's built into the lens is really nice because we almost don't need a gimbal. 
course, a gimbal would make it better when it's like, whoa, boom, boom, you're beating up wind. But this little gimbal built in works well. Uh, we use this mainly for dinghy boat around the boat. Sometimes we take it underwater for snorkeling when we don't want to bring the big camera. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it. That's a great camera. Yep. Oh, I did add a microphone to it for our crossing. So in our night footage or anytime we were at the helm, we were using this little mini shotgun microphone. It's the one nice thing about the Sony is it just has a regular mic input. So we were able to capture better audio, except the processor in the action cam is not amazing. So when it gets really loud, um, it doesn't really matter if you have a good external mic or not. But um, yeah, anyway, having an external mic is very helpful. And sometimes when it's loud, it's just plain loud. It yeah. doesn't matter what mic you exactly, have. Exactly, because it's loud as heck when you're beating up wind and on a boat that makes a lot of noise. Yeah. Next camera. One tip that we learned the hard way is the knockoff versions of the GoPro and the action cam. We did not have good luck with them. Generally speaking, they're not quite as nice. They're, they're a lot less expensive for a reason from our experience. Okay, moving on. Two. got really glitchy. Yeah, they got glitchy, like we had two die on us, and the compression, the images are compressed so tightly that they lose data. So it, does, it looks more pixelated. It looks more pixelated, exactly. Nikki's reminding me from behind the camera. Next guy, Sony RX. Now, we had the RX3 before, left it out in two different rainstorms, torrential rainstorms. It survived. It's still surviving. We still use it as a backup camera. This is the newer version, the 5, and it's exactly the same, just slightly better, I guess. It has 4K, which it's nice to shoot in 4K even if you're not producing videos in 4K because then you can crop in to the image when you're editing. Notice these little muffs. Eyebrows. Yeah, eyebrows. Some people say it looks like, uh, dang, Marx Brothers, the Marx Brothers. Anyway, this uh, helps with the wind. And I have not had this on the camera in any of our previous vid videos. So it's really, this will no doubt help. If there was a lot of wind, I'd take it out and show you right now. We mainly use this camera for city walking around. Nikki likes it a lot because she can put it on an action camera stick and do selfie stuff and talk to the camera with the flip up screen. You can actually see it. it has a nice stabilizer built in. Although because it's so light, if you're walking, no matter how good the stabilizer is in there, it will be shaky. So a gimbal, a gimbal for that, which they now make. Feiyu, the company that makes this one, they now make one for that camera. It will be a really good investment, which I think we'll be buying sometime in the near future. Yeah. Uh, anything else we want to say about that camera? I just, it's less obvious so when we're walking yeah. around a town, it's just, it's just not as invasive, I guess. Yeah, it's not invasive. When you're walking around a town and you don't want to stick out, um, you don't want people to think, oh, he's got this really expensive camera, or she's got this expensive camera. This just looks like a regular camera. Downsides, it's a very standard lens. It's super sharp, 1.8. It can shoot like super low light, but it's not wide, and it's not telephoto. So it's just like a standard length of focal length of lens. So it's not perfect in that aspect, because it is hard to shoot a selfie like this. You have to put it on a selfie stick and reach way out or to try and capture like some wildlife off on a little island is difficult because the lens isn't that long. So I would say that's probably the only downside to this camera. Yeah. For us. All right, what's next? I just showed them the zoom. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't zoom that far. It's like a 24 to 70 if you have a DSLR. It's like a 24 to 70 lens, something in those, um, that range. Okay, next. All right, before I go into the drones you see out here, underwater footage, I'm gonna talk about my normal go-to camera, which is this Sony a7 II. It's three years old now, this particular model, so it's not the best, it's not the latest, it's not the greatest. I will likely upgrade, but I love this camera. The stabilization is awesome. I have a 24 to 70 Zeiss lens on here. It works really well. However, I wish I had an 18 to 105 or something like that because wider and longer is always better. Um, this microphone, this microphone is amazing. It's, it's cheap. It's just like a hundred bucks and it has these little sensors built in that connect. And it just connects with this camera seamlessly. You don't ever have to turn it on. 
That said, when I'm hiking or walking in town, it takes shock. Boom, 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 boom. And it bothers me. It bothers me. I kind of just live with it most of the time. But I ordered this kit, this microphone, <laughs> which is even better. And I think I'll use this microphone for the last little bit of our, our filming so you can hear it side by side um, with the other one. But it has the shock mount, the shock mount built in, a nice dead cat. A little bit bigger mic so it has better sound. They just launched one recently that has a lithium battery built in. I will probably buy that one if I decide I really love this microphone, but so far I'm liking it. Only downside is you have to remember to turn it on. This is my number one go-to 99% of the time. This is what I'm going to just grab. And I used to love the A6000. I think the, the A6000 series is great, um, but this one has a full frame sensor which is better for us on a boat, which means I can get wider shots. Wider and longer is always better. Oh, we could go down a bad path with that. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what it sounds like compared to this guy. All right, moving on to the world of drones, right? <laughs> yeah. They don't record audio, which it would just sound like a swarm of bees. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you can actually record, I, I noticed the other day, I think you can actually record audio on your phone as you're flying it. So you're like, oh no, I'm wrecking. And it, <laughs> Anyway, this is the DJI Phantom 3 Advanced. We like this drone very much. It served its purpose. It's sharp. It's clean. The, the footage is um, nice and fluid. It's far superior of a camera, I think, even the 3, versus the Mavic. And you can tell, um, <laughs> well, this stinking gimbal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just by sheer size of the lens, uh, more glass almost almost always means bigger glass almost always means better image not not always I said almost always um, but anyway this guy's just massive for someone who's trying to live small on a boat what's wrong oh yeah this. <laughs> someone who's trying to live small on a boat to try and carry these and pack them away with very little storage space it, it is too much or carry it with you somewhere yeah trying to take this on a hike uh -uh. To the beach. Yeah. No. But I find that we rarely go to it because because it's the older model. If we had the new model, maybe I don't know. This one's so light, so easy to use, so easy to fly. It's so compact. So compact. I'm sure you've seen reviews. This thing folds up to almost nothing. It's a great little drone. Don't get me wrong. It's just it's like comparing a GoPro to um, this camera. You know, it's. It's good quality. It's good quality. But it's uh, not yeah. as good. Yeah. And the only downside is it has this protective thing that's supposed to go on here and keep the lens protected and the gimbal protected, but it broke like in the first couple days. So um, we did get the Fly More Combo. It's this whole bag, comes with it all. The remote, obviously, two spare batteries. And then it has this neat battery charger that I can charge all three batteries, not at the same time, but I think this is actually a smart charger, so it knows which battery is the most full, and it charges that one first. That's just speculation based on what I've, the way I've seen it charge. But anyway, this is a, a nice little kit, and it was only like a couple hundred dollars more. Um, worth it. Fly more for a reason, because it has more batteries. We only ever bought one battery for this guy, so it was like a 10-minute flight time, and then we were done for half an hour. Which uh, is so sad when you hiked off 20 miles yeah, to get somewhere. To only have one battery. Don't. Don't be cheap like me, buy multiple batteries. These are neutral density and polarizers. Very important. When you're flying with a drone and it's full sun out, you need to bring the darkness down or you need to cut the light or you need to um, knock the reflections off of the ocean. Having a polarizer set, super important. Mm -hmm. And these are 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks, um, yeah. depending on what model you have. Also, with a bunch of white boats, they end up just all being blown out. Yeah, it just blows out the boats or just the reflections of the water blow out and you can't see through the water like to the reef. Um, no matter how clear the water is, having a polarizer. I mean, same could be said for this camera here. I do throw on the polarizer every now and then just based on where we are. But not nearly often enough. No. Drones? Done. I, I think... I think this will be my go-to, even if we had the four. It's just so compact. This is perfect for our lifestyle.
just if they can make it a little bit better let's uh scuba going down okay this is the easiest way to start with an action camera whether you have a gopro or sony or anything they do a decent job underwater and that's kind of you know this whole scuba thing living on a boat it's all new to us filming underwater i mean we've been scuba certified for a long time and diving and everything uh, but this will no doubt get you by do a good job the next upgrade you could do is add a light something like this this one's like led it lasts for a really long time do i sound nasally yeah <laughs> i feel like i sound nasally this mask we thought was going to be the most awesome thing in the world it is but it's amazing how much you're when you're snorkeling your head moves up and down and the waters crash so the best thing that this thing does is give you that here's my hands going away from the camera it's it's a neat perspective but i would not would you recommend this i would recommend i do i still like with it. reservations with reservations with reservations but having a light a good light like this one is all the difference especially if you're using a mask thing this is like this is like the perfect starter kit okay and we recently added a bigger batter more bigger batter camera setup this little guy goes inside this thing it makes this little camera look super massive this is kind of our go-to you've seen in some of the recent scuba diving footage and some of the snorkeling footage light camera action Nothing to say bad about it. I mean, like I said, it's all pretty new. It's a fairly easy setup. Yeah, this is a Sony case. It comes with a kit. I think we bought this and this as a kit, not this light. This is separate. The light and the handle are separate from the lighting company. And then I keep everything separate here for my underwater stuff with silica packs and everything so nothing gets super moist. For the GoPro, we do have these filters this filter here this filter set here is made for using the gopro without a case and these just slide in just based on your depth you use a different color very helpful it does make a big difference in the way the footage looks it makes a huge difference in the color of the footage and then this set here works with the they call this underwater case something like super underwater i don't know what they call it but it has for its own yeah for scuba diving because it, it goes much deeper than the the gopro can on its own but these filters same exact thing um do you have this one for the action cam or the gopro little gopro there with two lights here <laughs> might be overkill uh scuba is that it for scuba oh uh yeah lighting is you know when we started we didn't have any lights and now that we actually have these lights it's a world of difference. Oh, I oh, can't uh, imagine. Wide or narrow beam. Wide or narrow beam. So different things. This is kind of like an in-between middle ground wide narrow beam thing. So it goes under rocks. It can light up under rocks and everything great, but it will blast out. If I'm shooting in a hole, it might blast out in the center. Whereas the other one, where did I put it? Oh. This is a super wide angle. So this is great if I want to get really close to a fish. This is the set, the light here. This is a wide angle. So you can still see the fish, so especially see. on camera. And then there's like super narrow spotlights, which I don't own. Those just totally blow out whatever you're pointing it at. Um, unless you're shooting in manual mode and you're set up for it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, it. This, this camera setup, it, it looks massive, but when you're underwater, it doesn't really weigh anything. I think it's a really good starter kit. I mean, I could have spent thousands of dollars and gotten an underwater housing for this camera that we're shooting with now, um, but this was just a couple hundred bucks to add on to yeah. the little Sony camera. This is like, we got our feet wet with the action cameras. We got a little deeper with this guy, and I'm sure in the future, one day, we'll end up with one for the big camera. That's it for the cameras. There's just a couple little accessories I wanna talk about. First one is this guy. Um, this is a Wego lithium battery pack. I've had the knockoff versions and they did not last. This one has lasted the test of time through the salt, the, the salty air, the sand, everything. How I use this is it has this fast output option. If you can see that, plug it into my camera. Um, when I forget to bring an extra battery, I just plug it in. Boom, it like tops up the battery pretty darn quickly. It also works for the phone, the iPhone. 
um, and anything else, the iPad. This little device has saved my butt a couple times. This one is like, this is the thing to have this Christmas. I feel, well, if you're a photographer or you like to be in like super dangerous situations. <laughs> this looks like something made in, well, no offense, the 80s. It's like a... Old school radar detector. Radar detector, exactly. Just one little button. Well, what you do is you clip it onto your camera, you set up your tripod. As soon as there's lightning, it sees the lightning in this and boom, captures it. I have no idea how it works. You know, the, the speed of light is so fast, it blows my mind that this little thing can actually tell the shutter to capture the lightning. I don't know, it blows me away every time. Show that montage of a few lightning shots now. Pretty cool, right? Anyway, this is like, uh, yeah, awesome. Other things, selfie sticks, floaties. Um, Sandmark is a really good company. They make pretty good products here, and as you can tell, it's made for the water. It still has a little bit of water left in it, which is not, I'm not supposed to, uh, I'm supposed to dry it out before I put it away. Uh, anyway, having a selfie stick's not just about taking your own photo, but when you're swimming underwater, having a stick to like put in little holes to see if there's fish or to capture uh, yourself even, uh, but having one made for water. It's not like every single selfie stick is good for underwater use, especially in salt water. We found that this one works pretty well. Yeah, they'll just rust out. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's all my toys. Um, hopefully this becomes like a regular thing, not my camera reviews, but uh, the Thursday, things on Thursday, I think maybe we tried to call it. We'll see. Something like that. Uh, but I think that's it. Is there something I'm missing? Uh, no, just if you, uh, oh, I will make sure to have Jason give a nice write up and review for each of the products on our website and the post. So that way, if you're curious about just one thing, you can check out more information on that there. We've got, uh, we'll put a list of all of the things we've just talked about with links in the description box. Some of those are affiliate links. So if you do decide to purchase something, if you will click through there, that gives us a few pennies. It doesn't cost you anything extra and helps keep these videos flowing. flowing. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Yeah, hopefully you found something interesting. And oh, I will link to not only the cameras I have, but actually the newest version, because I would say. Yeah, don't buy something that's older. Yeah. You would want the new version of whatever that thing is. Yeah, because it'll only be better. Remember, the bigger the glass, the wider. <laughs> the better <laughs> the picture, yeah. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you. See you. Next time. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Eat a turkey. No. Or a tofurkey. <laughs> no. We're just a whole bunch of pie. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's go somewhere.